So today we're going to talk about the topic learning in the age of distraction and creating your own curriculum. So I've always loved building personal curriculums or mini curriculums, especially during breaks and learning a new language or a new skill. And I've seen lately that the um, topic of building your personal curriculum is really trending. And I think this comes from TikTok, but I'm personally not on TikTok, so I would love to know where it comes from. So if you know, put it down below. But anyways, with 2026 coming up, I thought it is the perfect time actually to start learning a new skill and to really hone the art of learning a new skill. And I basically wanted to give my own spin on this and kind of show to you how I would build my personal curriculum as a PhD student and how I'm going to do it for the first month of 2026 in January. So I personally research mental health disorders and my background is actually computational. So even though during my PhD, I've learned a lot about the psychology and also the psychiatry of different mental health disorders, I sometimes do feel I lack this fundament. So for me, my personal curriculum, I wanted to really dedicate it to learning more about mental health, mental health related disorders, and really from the perspective of not neuroscience, which is my background, but from the perspective of psychology and psychiatry. So in this video, I'll show you how to make a personal curriculum, why I think it's so good to have a personal curriculum and to take charge of your own learning, basically to battle a little bit against this brain world, as people call it online. And basically I will be structuring all of this in Notion. So in Notion, you can build your own curriculum and you can adapt it to anything. So I want to show you my curriculum in Notion, which I will already show you here. And if you want to build along, I think that's really nice. So I will also in the description down below, leave basically the template that I use to design my own curriculum from. So I've not built this template myself, but I think it's really, really nice and very easy to adapt. So if you're excited to build your own curriculum, let's get started. So the first thing that you have to decide before you build your own curriculum is of course what you want to learn. So for me, it was quite clear. So I've always wanted to have a little bit more time to read a lot about mental health, mental health related disorders. But I think during my PhD and also during my master's, because it was just so busy, I didn't really have the time to read some of the fundamental or foundational books. So the first question that you want to ask yourself is what am I excited about to learn? And if you are like me, you have a large list of topics, but if you are a little bit unsure what you're actually excited about or what you think is fun, what I would do is to start with tiny low pressure experiments of learning certain topics. So maybe you thought very minutely of learning, for example, a language, but you're unsure if you actually want to dedicate your time to. Over the next seven days, what I would do is to just spend seven minutes every day learning a different skill and just see, are you curious about it? Does it bring you excitement? Do you want to learn more about it? And then after those seven days, you can kind of reflect and decide what are the topics that you actually want to start learning about and which make you really excited. Another tip that I heard in another video, and I cannot remember where, but is to think about what was really exciting for you to learn about as a child or what is really exciting for you to learn about in your free time. So for example, if you listen to podcasts, if you read books, if you go to the library, what are topics that you gravitate naturally towards? And these can be more serious topics, something related to maybe your university course, etc. But it can also be a little bit more fun topics, like for example, cooking or learning a new knitting skill. I think all of these are valid because again, it will be your personal curriculum. So you can decide what topics you want to deep dive into. So then the second topic that I want to talk about is designing your curriculum like a PhD student. And I will show you my Notion dashboard as well as I will be doing this. So again, I got this dashboard from a template that I will link in the description down below. But I think the template in general is really beautiful and very nice. It's very easy. So I did adapt it a little bit. So for example, I changed the icon to a little brain, a man with a little brain, and I changed the background to neurons. So I decided to call my course a course on mental health. If I would see it, I would almost see this as a semester on mental health, for example. But basically what you want to choose first is the theme you want to learn about. And that can be one theme like I did, but it can, for example, also be something a little bit more whimsical, like hobbies, you know, like it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a very serious course like this. Then afterwards, you want to subdivide the main theme that you want to learn about into subtopics. So I decided for my course to divide it into uh, four subtopics. And I also put Brazilian Portuguese here because I want to learn a language as well, but I haven't filled this in. 
And these are basically the four main topics that I'm currently curious about. And some of them I have already built and some of them I'm still building. After that, you basically want per topic to decide a few quality resources and these quality resources you can find in multiple ways so one way which i find i do personally is to map it out yourself but something else that you can also do is to try to find a course syllabus online so for example if you're curious about psychiatry google psychiatry 2025 mit harvard whatever big name university you're interested in and then usually you can actually find a course curriculum or a course syllabus online. And there, there's really high quality resources. So I will also put down below the um, course syllabus I used for my mental health course, basically, because it's given by this professor that I'm really interested in her work. And I thought she had a very unique syllabus. So I used a lot of resources from her. But in general, I think this is really a goldmine that all these resources that professors use are just published online and you can just follow along and almost get to a certain extent the basics of a university level education. So then what I do is per topic, so in this case for example the history of mental illness, I pick three to four learning resources. So one of them is for example the history of mental illness and I put here this Coursera course which I heard is quite good about the history of mental illness. Um, yeah, and there's nothing here yet because I haven't started yet, but in the end I would also probably put some notes here. I would do the same for all the other courses. So, for example, Schizophrenia Course, Schizophrenia Disorders. This is a book, a really good book if you're interested. So I already read this one, but I will probably reread it for this course. And these high quality set of resources can be courses, which is very, very straightforward books. But also think a little bit wider. So think, for example, about podcasts, lectures on YouTube, in general YouTube videos. Because again, this is a personal curriculum and it doesn't have to be university level grade. So for example, Hidden Valley Road is um, a novel, so it's not actually a textbook, but I just want to get a little bit more background on schizophrenia and actually also the lived experience of schizophrenia. And what I would also want to say with this is try to limit your resources to three or four per topic because if you add five, six, a hundred, which is quite easy to find online, a hundred topics or maybe a um, hundred resources on the topic schizophrenia, but you will easily get overwhelmed. And we will dive into this a little bit later, but the biggest risk of building a personal curriculum is that you have a lot of joy in building it, but then you actually don't use it. So I also want to give a few tips on how I go about like actually learning from these resources but definitely try to keep it small to start with so i also really try to keep it small with only four topics and per topic i only have a few um resources then afterwards what i would do per course and i haven't done this for all the courses yet but is to also set some clear output goals so these output goals can be um very small so that can basically be for example create a summary but it can also be a little bit larger like an essay or anything along those lines and basically the idea behind it is that you want to reassess all the things you learned in your own words because i think to some extent you can read a lot you can listen to a lot but the most difficult is often to reiterate all of this information in your own words and i think having small clear output goals allows you to do this so at university these are naturally implemented at the end of every course you oftentimes have an exam or an essay but if you're learning yourself you can also do something very fun like for example making a video online creating a mind map after you read something but for me oftentimes my main goal of learning more in this case about schizophrenia about mental health related disorders is that afterwards i would like to explain it to other people what i've learned something else that i always recommend is to approach the building of a curriculum quite analytically a little bit like a researcher with the idea in mind that it can also be iterative so as you decided on your resources these don't have to be static so as I'm learning something or as I'm reading a book sometimes I find that the book is very limited or I find that the information is not exactly what I'm looking for and it's okay to put the book away and find another resource or to supplement for example what you're reading by another podcast etc because you basically want to allow your process of learning to be a little bit creative and to be a little bit whimsical. And I don't think it has to be as structured as a university course where you only are allowed to 
read the main textbook. So try to see it a little bit like research as well, where you're trying to find the correct information. So break complex topics down into smaller parts and try to find for every part something you want to learn about. Look at underlying mechanism and patterns between the different resources you're using. And also always critically evaluate the sources and perspectives that you're using. So most books, most courses are limited in what they're telling you, not on purpose, but just because they have limited time. And be aware of who is explaining something to you or what are you learning and be quite a little bit critical. And I think this is maybe less important if you're learning a skill like cooking, but maybe it's more important if you're actually trying to deep dive into a specific topic. So then I want to dive a little bit on the topic of why would you actually want to build a personal curriculum in the age of distraction? So I think learning as an intentional alternative for passive sc scrolling is so important. So even myself, I've noticed lately that I scroll quite a lot and that I have the tendency to be quite distracted. And I think times in my life where I really prioritized learning and I actually had a lot of fun with learning were times that I was less tempted to basically scroll away my time. And I think it's also very nice to build your own curriculum because it basically allows you to have this curiosity driven learning which i think on this channel i'm slowly really moving towards this idea of curiosity driven learning versus credential driven learning so credential driven learning is basically what you oftentimes do at university where you mostly want to learn something to get the degree afterwards and i know this is not true for everyone but i think for a lot of us that is true Whereas when we were children, for example, a lot of us were more driven by curiosity that we just wanted to find out the truth about a certain topic or wanted to just be able to do a certain skill. And I think to get back to that mindset, we need to allow ourselves to learn outside of the context of only credits, basically. And this also comes from an early insight from a paper that I've read by Cronbach and Snow from 1977. And they also said that strong learners didn't only succeed because of raw intelligence or pure intelligence, however you want to call this. But they also tended to have higher self-confidence, more structured logical thinking, a more analytical approach, better mental tools for reflection and problem solving, and more effective learning strategies. But they also had a fundamental advantage that they were often intrinsically motivated to learn. And I think by building this curriculum yourself, you will refine that intrinsic motivation and you will also rediscover what were you actually interested in before it kind of got stomped out of you um, through the system, so to say. So that is why I would highly encourage you to build a personal curriculum, even if it is something outside of university and not only academic. So and then you want to turn this entire system that I've shown you so far into Notion. So I've, of course, already shown you the um, different courses, but you can go a little bit further. So there is also a learning by topic. So, for example, you can check off everything you've done. I think that is a really nice feature. There's a calendar view, so you can also block in, for example, when you would want to learn something. And there's also just a list view, which is quite nice. Something else is that you can also really personalize this. So something else that I would maybe add it's also to add progress trackers. So this naturally has, for example, a progress tracker. So again, if you're using this template, that is quite easy. But in general, I think using a template like this is really nice, but you can of course use something else as well. Secondly, at the end, I am excited. So this is still from the template, but for all of this to also write down my notes as I'm learning about this, as I'm reading about this. And I think the whole idea of the second brain by Tiago Forte is basically what I use Notion for. So I don't only use Notion to create curriculums like this, but I also really use it to put down or archive a lot of my notes. So at the end of my PhD, I really noticed that everything I learned to a certain extent was on Notion. And if I ever wanted to look up something, reference a student towards something, give someone advice about how to learn something, I could refine it in Notion. So I would definitely also recommend looking into this idea of a second brain and I think I made a video about it that you can also watch. So lastly, the big thing that I want to talk about is a little bit this idea of pitfalls and how to avoid them. So even though building a personal curriculum, I find it really fun. I find it very interesting to do, but there is a tendency of over programming, over engineering and over planning. So after you have this personal curriculum, don't spend too much time on perfecting it. I think it's just very important to have three topics, have a few resources and just try to start. 
So I would then define a time window in which you want to learn or want to actually use the personal curriculum. So for me, it's January because I have a month off finally of my work. So what better way to spend that month than to learn some other topic that I'm curious about. So in general, what I would often do is schedule or specific days or specific time blocks. So these time blocks can be in the morning, an hour after work, etc. But to just have a dedicated time that you will revisit the personal curriculum and actually sit down with it. Then during that hour, you basically want to start with one of the courses that you decided on and try to reflect on it, etc. Afterwards, I would also always take a regular inventory of what I have learned. So what worked well, what didn't, what should be adjusted. And this is again the whole idea that this learning process is iterative. So if there is a course that you took and you find that it's not really giving you the information or the knowledge that you want, write that down and feel free to move on to another course. I think to a certain extent, this kind of metacognitive reflection helps you recognize patterns, helps you see what resources are actually valuable and helps you also decide which ones you want to skip. Finally, I think it is also very important, but I won't talk about it too much in this video, but to anchor your curriculum in the core science of learning. So there are some core principles in learning that you want to apply whenever you're learning a topic. That's, for example, retrieval practice, actively recalling information, not just passively learning something or highlighting space practice, so distributed learning over time. Don't just learn it once, revisit the information again, for example, a week later and then a month later, and interleaving. That's mixing related topics or problem types on the same topic. And all of these techniques are also described online and you can learn a little bit more about it. And I think I also want to, at some point, make a dedicated video about the science of learning and the neuroscience of learning and which topics are actually, or which methods are actually good to learn. Because a lot of us do highlight a lot and that is actually scientifically shown to be one of the worst methods to actually learn. So it allows you to recognize information, but it doesn't allow you to retrieve information. But try during your practice to, in some extent, actively recall what you're learning. I think that's the most important. And then the last advice that I would try to follow and that I'm also going to try to follow myself is the goal is not perfection, but the goal is actually to allow yourself to learn something that you're interested in outside of the constraints of university or work life. Because I think we're all inherently really curious and most of us really want to learn some topics, but we often don't give ourselves the time. And then instead of giving ourselves the time, we decide to waste the time by scrolling or to passively watch something that we actually don't fundamentally enjoy. And I think carving out this time for yourself to learn something that you're curious about is also one of the biggest gifts that you can give yourself for 2026. If you're building a personal curriculum right now, I would be really curious what kind of personal curriculum you're building. Is it something a little bit more creative or something a little bit more scientific like I'm doing? And also, I would love to hear if you have any resources or tips for me for building a personal curriculum, because even though I love building these kind of curricula, I don't think I'm necessarily an expert, so I would love to learn more from you and hope to see you next time. Bye!